But we're going to start with a quiz. Now, it's okay, because I'm, I'm going to give you a uh, multi-choice on this. Uh, but uh, a verse will appear on the screen. Let me go back a bit. Well, there you are. You've got a quick gl- glimpse into uh, sort of it. Oh. It's the top one that you go. Right, okay, there we are. There, there, there. You've just seen everything. <laughs> um, but I have hidden your word in my blank. But I might not sin against you. Some may remember a particular quiz show. Uh, but could you fill that one in, do you think? I have hidden your word in my bookcase. Yes? No? I have hidden your word in my phone. Or I have hidden your word in my heart. A- a- any, any thoughts? Which, which do you think it might be? Heart. Well, there we are. Good. You, you won't have to do too much other loud interactive stuff. But have you ever wondered why it says heart and not memory? Surely, you know, I've, I, I've learned this stuff, I've memorised it. it, it's in my head. Well, in the same way that it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, it also adds with all your mind and soul and strength. And in some languages, you may have heard me say before, uh, they translate it as, Love the Lord your God with all your liver. Because um, the heart's this thing that pumps blood and the, the liver is where all the emotions live for, for that group. That's how I understand it. So it made more sense to say, love the Lord. I'm, I'm not going to... I'll get sidetracked. i get sidetracked so easily. <laughs> but you love the Lord with all your heart uh, because it's about passion and practice. It's about living your faith. Living your faith out with each heartbeat, each breath. It's not just knowing stuff so that we can win the Bible knowledge quiz. Or knowing stuff so that we can walk away thinking that we've won the argument. Well, I I got the call on Thursday, 6.20, 10 minutes before I was due to go off to some of the meeting. Will you preach on Sunday, Peter? Uh, Yes. Yes. Those verses in the Bible quickly came to my mind. Uh, the, the, the ones that are about always being prepared for something or other. Uh, and, and along with all that stuff uh, about um, uh, knowing and, and meditating on Scripture and about putting faith into action. Do you know which ones I mean? Well, maybe. Again, I'll not test you on that one. But I, I wrote down a number of... Uh, other ideas. Just a, a quick plan. What was I going to talk about? Uh, proverbs, products, and preparation. Those ones occurred to me very quickly. That's what I could talk about because I'd been reading the book of Proverbs. And uh, did you know that the Solomon is alleged to have written over 3,000 Proverbs? And a bunch of others were added in as well into the book. Uh, but there's only about seven or 800 Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, uh, and I, I can't quote all of them, but many of them sound familiar to me, and some may sound familiar to you. And someone explains sort of why they're there. They're to, to teach and encourage, uh, let you know how to live your life. And, uh, oh, you read the story at the end of Solomon's life, and you kind of think, you should go back and read this stuff that you wrote. It's good. <laughs> he got a few bits wrong later on. Now, products. Um, well, yeah, you may not see it too clearly, but I, I've been researching Bible comic books uh, in the last couple of weeks for work, as you do, uh, and, and children's Bibles. Uh, and it reminded me of Paul's letter to Timothy. And Timothy, he says, uh, learn all this stuff from birth, from his mother. And uh, I didn't have sort of uh, uh, Bible comic books. Um, th- there's a very good illustrated Bible if you want to t- take a look at it. You might be a little bit too young for that one, but there are lots more because you can learn this stuff from so, so young. And in fact, uh, some of us have heard and learned the Bible and the Bible stories and the Bible songs since we were yay high 
Or, or, or yay high. Uh, some of us are still... Uh, whatever high you are. But some of us heard it all our lives. Some sort of discovered it later. And we're still reading many bits for the first time. Or we're reading something and we go, oh, I'm sure I've read that before, but I've never noticed that until now. The bit that I quoted from the psalm, I just looked up... Uh, as we were singing about sort of strength. Oh, where are all the, the verses on strength? I can, I can look it up, so just type strength and it'll give me all the verses on strength. And it includes ones about not feeling so strong, not feeling so great, and calling out to God in those times. Now that's uh, a little bit about products, a little bit more about products later. Preparation. I'd love to answer, you know, how long did it take you to write this sermon? I want to say, oh, just 30 minutes and sort of 33 years preparing it. In, in reality, um, it, it doesn't take me long to come up with what I might say. It's just paring it down that takes several hours. Uh, and it occurred to me, you mentioned it was Palm Sunday today. It is. I'll mention that again later. My dad was baptised in this very building somewhere under there is a baptistry, uh, 31 years ago. And he was about my age at that point. Uh, and I always remember that uh, both mum and dad were baptised together, Palm Sunday 1992, because I was baptised Palm Sunday 1990. And I've got no idea what date those fell on, but I remember it by Palm Sunday. So Palm Sunday is always special. And so that's sort of 33 years for me, uh, 33 and a half. I've been reading a little bit before I got baptised. I'm looking at this stuff and of hearing sermons. And I just wondered, how many sermons do you think that you've heard? How many Bible passages do you think that you've read? And how many have spoken to you over the years? How many have you been able to use to speak to others? Don't bother to try and come up with a number. It's probably quite a lot. But, um, bottom bum. Remind me of that. It's the bottom bum. Thinking a- again about sort of, uh, products. I mentioned sort of, uh, Bible comics and things. Now, no one was, uh, who's here was around before the printing press, I don't think. Uh, no one was around before the King James Bible, but a few of you may have been around before the, um, well, before the uh, revised version, the new revised version, and there, now there is the new revised updated edition uh, of that one, and uh, then so many others, and so many other great things. Is the Bible hidden on your phone? Well, not hidden, but do you use it from your phone? Uh, do you... Do you, anybody here listen to audio Bibles? Yes. yes. A- anybody going to start? Cause they, they're great. And I just, there's a, a feature on, on your, your phone as well that will let you click a button and say, uh, just play it for the next 30 minutes and then switch off. So you can go to bed listening to scripture and you can fall asleep before the end of it. You know, and if you're a real insomniac, you can set it to play for two hours and... Uh, Either you'll fall asleep during that time, or you'll get some benefit from being wide awake. Or you can listen while you're you're doing the ironing or doing whatever. Fantastic. And we've got kind of smart speakers now. You know, sometimes you have smart speakers standing up here. Uh, uh, Well, over the years, there have been so many different products that have helped you, that have helped your family. And um, it's 80 years since the first Bible comic came out. Did you know that? A- anybody get that one? It was done by, uh, I think, DC Comics for the first couple of editions and then somebody else. And then there was, say, one in the, the 1970s and there, there have been lots more. So there's an illustrated Bible uh, on the back that was done probably uh, 20 years ago, maybe even now that one. But there... They're really valuable. So many things that will help us. And I want to talk about the value of reading or listening to the Bible. And of thinking about it. And talking about it. And knowing what God has done and said in the past. Knowing that 
can help us as we trust him with our lives now and the lives of the people that we love and the lives of the people that he loves, which includes those we love, but a, a whole lot more as well. I want you to think about the value of doing that, whether you've been doing it all your life or if you're just starting, and to say, don't give up. It's not about legalistic patterns of thinking, I must have my quiet time uh, before breakfast or just after breakfast every day, and if I don't, God will be cross with me. No. It's not, not, not about that. It's not about being legalistic. It's not about sort of thinking that God will reward you or judge you based on your religious practices in that sense. It's not even about exactly how much you know. It's about who you know. And it's about recognising, perhaps, that we all need to hear a bit of good news and of encouragement and of wisdom. And that God might actually use us to encourage others or to pray for others. Uh, how many of you, uh, you know, said, oh, we, we, we need to, we'd like you to get up and, and pray? For Lucy said, oh, well, well, let me go off. Uh, it'll only take me three or four hours. I just want to prepare the right prayer for this. <laughs> you go up and pray with knowledge and with hope and with the knowledge that sometimes you, you won't get it completely right. <laughs> but you trust God to guide you in what you're saying. Do you remember that bit? Uh, it's about a Pharisee and a tax collector and the Pharisee is so proud of his status and his knowledge and his credentials and how he looks to everybody else because uh, nothing bad has come to light yet. And uh, as far as everyone can see, you know, um, well, he's always done the right things. And he looks at this tax collector. <sighs> says, thank you, God, that I'm not like him. And the tax collector, meanwhile, prays to God, have mercy on me a sinner. And Jesus asked, which went away justified before God? It says, at the end of John, Jesus performed many other signs in the, the presence of his disciples that aren't recorded in this book. They're written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So however much you've read, however much is stuck in your head somewhere, or in your heart, even better, has it been enough to convince you of who he is and to trust him? Now, don't stop. Keep reading more. <laughs> it's, it's good. Uh, I also thought, oh, I, I've got three Ps. Now, now, I don't want to be one of those who just has a three-point sermon. So I thought we could also have uh, practice, providence, and prayer. I, I've got a much longer list of Ps, which is why, again, it takes me a while to cut down on them. But um, there's a verse that says that uh, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sent in my name, will teach you all things and remind you that everything that I've said to you. That's in John 14, 26, if people are taking notes. Nah, you can just look it up later. Um, another says, but when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. Now, neither of those verses are necessarily promising a supernatural ability to recall scripture verses, especially the ones that you haven't read yet. But God might do that sometimes. It, he's quite clever. He can do things that uh, we don't expect. And some passages are embedded firmly in most of our brains. And there's a, a process. I've got three R's for this one. Relevance, reverence, and repetition. <laughs> we do them and we say them again and again. In fact, uh, you might not be able to read it, but even if you can't read it, there's a prayer on there that you know. And so let's pray it together now, not because uh, we must, but because we can. Join in. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And you might remember it in slightly different forms, and it doesn't matter as long as you remember it. It's, it, it's in there, isn't it? And even if you... Had a, a, a go. Somebody, a, a friend of mine, had got a whole bunch of uh, magnetic words uh, to stick on your fridge. So we tried rewriting the Lord's Prayer using just those words. It was a bit tricky because there was a few missing. And then I also had a, a go at rewriting it without the use of the letter E. <sighs> Have a go if you like it sometime. But it's probably more useful just to remember one that you, you know. And if one day your memory fails you. For many things, I trust that you will remember many of the prayers and encouragements. When life's tough and you can't think of what else to say, what else to pray, you can still pray this. Okay, not, not as a, a magic charm, but as a reminder. I go through verse at a time. What does it say? What does it mean? Can I pray that? Well, it's, uh, I said, lots of amazing sort of products and things to help us. And this year, a new kind of product began emerging. AI chatbots. Anybody heard of AI chatbots? They're interesting things. I asked um, ChatGPT. What are the Bible verses that talk about being prepared to share our faith? And it told me, there are several Bible verses that talk about being prepared and ready to share our faith. Here are a few. 1 Peter 3, 15-16 In your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you. To give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. 2 Timothy 4, 2. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage. With great patience and careful instruction. Colossians 4, 5 to 6. Be wise in the way that you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer everyone. Matthew 10. 19 to 20. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Chat GPT then went on to say, well, you know, these verses remind us the importance of being prepared and ready to share our faith with others. We should always be ready to give an answer for the hope we have in Christ, and to share the good news of the gospel with those around us. May we be faithful and obedient in fulfilling this calling that God has given us. I don't know about you, but I am kind of <laughs> amazed and a little bit daunted by what computers can do these days. <laughs> it doesn't actually believe any of this, uh, but it, it, it's a set of algorithms that says, right, I'm going to have a conversation, uh, and you've said this, I, from all the stuff that I've got, I'm going to say this back. I think the Holy Spirit is a better guide, uh, but 
It's, it's, it's quite clever. Uh, and I, I don't know what's more scary, um, artificial intelligence or human ignorance. <sighs> Just before we declared that wisdom is meaningless, Ecclesiastes said something. He said, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. Is there anything which is new under the sun? Is there anything of which one can say, look, there's something new. It was already here long ago. It was here before our time. No one remembers the former generations, and even those yet to come will not be remembered to those that follow them. Some people are going to be a bit scared of this new technology. Do you know what? Some people were scared of the printing press. Some people were scared of mobile phones. Some people were scared of the, the atomic bomb. No, a bad, bad illustration. Science isn't always great. But, um, but there's lots of great potential. Another poet once said, history repeats itself. Has to. No one listens. Now, I might have nicked that idea from somebody else who said it back in 1905. Uh, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Now, Churchill is supposed to have said that or something similar uh, in a, a speech in Parliament. It's not recorded in Hansard, so I'm not sure whether he said it, because they've got a record of everything that has been said for a long, long time. But I did find uh, another sad quote while looking for that. Uh, back in sort of 1948 or something, I think it said, the only lesson that we learn from history is that we do not learn from history. Wow. I want us to learn from the history recorded in this, or on that, or, or on your smart speaker. I want us to remember the past and to live in the present with an eye to the future. Today is Palm Sunday. Not long after Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. Not long after so many other miracles, so many wonderful teaching. It was on this day that the King of Kings entered Jerusalem. Entered Jerusalem on a donkey and the crowds roared. They loved him. And they at least half knew their scriptures. Because they knew that a promised Messiah was coming one day. But so many kind of mixed up their ideas of who he was with what they wanted him to do. They wanted him to lead them in a, a, a revolt and overthrow the Romans. Make Jerusalem great again. And a week later, they turned on him. And followers fled and Jesus died. And I'm not giving away any spoilers here, I don't think. You know the story. He did die. And it seemed, must have seemed to so many, that hope died with him. But he is risen. And he is Lord. So our hope You'll come again and celebrate that next week and every day of your life. That you will remember the things that God from his word has placed on your heart. That you'll remember the people that he's placed on your heart to pray for. That you'll remember the tasks, the missions, the calling that he's placed on your heart. And you'll remember that it's all only possible in his strength through his grace. I pray that you'll get the opportunity to wish many people a happy Easter. And I pray that you'll get the opportunity to tell somebody what it means to you. His story repeats itself. Has to. Listen. Nice.